We're live. We are live. Hey, happy Wine for Bed Street Monday. It's the letter M this week. It is. I cannot believe we are up to the letter M already. So would this be, since this is number 13, is this season two now? I, you know, I don't know. I, 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 don't, I don't understand that whole season thing. Like, you know, if you don't take a break, is there new seasons? I, I, I don't know. I, I guess we can say it's season two. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. So, hey, Karen, how are you? San Francisco, you recently traveled to Barcelona. Oh, I'm yeah, jealous. That sounds like nice. I'm jealous. No. That's, I, I stained on my my next place to go. Yes, I want to go also. Um, Mike has been there for business and didn't let me tag along. So yeah, that's that's that. next. That's next on my list. Yeah, so. Barcelona. I've Ooh. got a lot of bucket things, bucket item things. Hungry. You know, and they just keep uh, they just keep uh, adding up. I yeah, more, more bucket lists. Yes, got enough time. So shall we get rolling? We, we are. I'm going to get Elmo right now. Uh, all right. So the letter of the day is M, and it stands for Mencia, which is in Spain. So um, this is the first time I've heard of this uh, particular great variety. How about you? It, it is the first time that I've heard of it also, but what is interesting to me is since we decided to do it, I've heard it multiple times in like the last couple of months. And it's funny because I've seen it um, funny yesterday. I was looking for a wine to open for dinner. We had prime rib, grilled prime rib. So I was looking through my wine cellar thing and I pulled out a Spanish wine and it was Mencia. Didn't even know I had it. I, put oh. it I said, I can't open this. Yeah. That'd be cheating. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be cheating on you. Yeah. Don't cheat on me. Don't no. cheat on me. No. No, Alma, Alma would be sad. Alma would be sad. All right. So why don't you introduce yourself? Okay. I am Debbie. I actually G. remembered that this time. That's right. <laughs> I'm Debbie Giaquindo. I'm the Hudson Valley Wine Goddess. Um, I'm a certified specialist of wine and a wine location specialist in Port and Champagne. Um, I recently published, or a year ago published, Tapping the Hudson Valley. It's a book on day trips and weekend itineraries visiting the craft beverage producers in the Hudson Valley and the sites along the way. Um, I'm co-owner of Happy Bitch Wines. I'm a partner in a restaurant in uh, Stone Harbor, New Jersey called Kitchen 330. And um, I don't know if I left anything out. I'm a wine blogger, wine writer, and uh, I'm not taking on any more new projects. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'm Lori Budd. My husband and I, Michael, uh, own the Dracina Wines, a, a boutique winery in Paso Robles. We specialize in Cabernet Franc. We also, I, I'm, I'm always all happy wine. about Cab Franc. Um, and we also produce a rosé of Syrah. And we are getting ready to bottle, I can't believe it, our 2016 wine will be bottled in July. Uh, we just finished our blending of our reserve. So, yay, we're going to have a reserve, a single vineyard designated wine. And what else? I am a wine blogger, a podcaster, obviously live streamer. Um, just came back from Bordeaux where I was a guest of uh, Clerc Mion uh, for the uh, Dance Awards, which blew my mind. So beautiful. and um, 
drank lots of their champagne in 2001, 2009. Oh, wow. Good Bordeaux. <laughs> what, what, what an experience. It was, it was. That really is. That's a once in a lifetime. Type yeah. Of thing. Yeah. It was. So it proud was of you. Can't yeah. wait to read about it. Oh, I, I got to write it. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. And again, it's so, I still haven't finished all of my writing from my first trip there. Um, but uh, it's, I did get out, I did get out the Covent de Jacobin, which was very uh, near to me. And he was such a sweetheart. He wrote me and thanked me for the podcast and the, and the uh, uh, blog, which I couldn't believe, you know, so that was very sweet of Xavier. But today we are going to Spain. So yes. Northwest Spain to be exact. Northwest Spain. Yes. Um, so we are, I'm going to start off with the general characteristics and here we go. So Mencia, so I actually say it's Mencia, it's actually Mencia. Is That's a, how it's pronounced? Yes, yes. Um, is a medium bodied red wine grape that produces wines with floral and red fruit flavors. If the fruit is harvested from older, low-yield vines, it has shown the ability to age like other fine wines, and it is suggested as an alternative for Pinot and Gamay lovers. So okay. my guess is that I'm going to like what's in this glass because I'm a Pinot and Gamay lover. So we'll see if they are right. Um, and Thea makes its home mainly in the northwest above the border of Portugal in a region including the districts of Bierzo, Ribeira Sacra, and Val de Ross. Since the region is not typically a tourist area, Menthia has been quite the secret for quite a long time. Another reason actually has been local neglect. Traditionally, Menthia was dismissed as an indifferent local table wine and was hardly ever seen outside of Spain, resulting in a rather thin and kind of lackluster wine. So because it was just thought of as a typical table wine, no real effort was put into it um, to export it. And when it was, it wasn't exactly the highest quality wines that, that people were seeing. Uh, in the 1990s, several wineries began producing exceptional wines and then people started to take notice and started going, hey, how can we get this, whatever. And now the um, exportation of it has increased. So our little map here, these are the regions. And there's my little lovely Rias Bacius. Oh, I love that place. I love that That was wine. a bucket list for me also. Um, Menthia is the primary grape of the Bierzo region, actually covering nearly two-thirds of the vineyards. This red grape variety is grown almost exclusively in the northwest part of Spain, especially in the DOs of Galicia, Valdeoras, Montiero, and Riviera Sacra. Mencia ripens early, actually by mid-September, and is well suited to the maritime climate of the Bierzo, where autumn rains are quite common. So it sees a lot of rain. So um, I didn't read anything about um mold issues so i'm guessing I it's got that. I got oh do you okay I um <laughs> so we'll talk more about that because i was curious um they're they're harvesting by mid-september i was curious if that really is at the full ripeness or they're trying to beat some of the rain so that is probably more along your lines okay the terpenes and terpenoids Menthia contains high levels of the subgroup aroma compounds called terpenoids, which translate into lovely flower aromas, strawberry and raspberry. So all up in my jam right here. I'm like dying to try this wine. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it too. Um, in addition, there's black licorice, pomegranate and cherry sauce. So all of the things that I love to get in wine. When you look at a glass of Menthia, you'll notice it's a deep red purple with subtle hues of violet towards the rim. And the color tells that Menthia has the high anthocyanin, the red pigments. So I just had to like look at it and oh, that is I spot on. That is spot on. I mean, this 
I don't want to use the word, um, but I'm going to. Like what it is dark, like grape juice, like yeah, pure yeah. grape juice. But it is spot on that it's the deep purple. So yeah. there are a lot. It will give us some purple teeth. Yes, yes, I believe so. Um, okay, on the palate, you'll be greeted with peppery flavors. That's the little powdery stuff there. Peppery flower flavors. Sour cherry, red currant, and pomegranate, along with bitter cherry pit flavors, which comes from the wine tannin. Now, this is this is a complete sidebar, but red currants, um, where was, I forget where I was, but um, Mike and I were out for dinner, so it had to be over Memorial Day weekend, and there was red currants on the plate, but neither of us knew what it was. <laughs> You know, and I was like, what is it? What is it? And I did my typical, well, you taste it first, you know? And uh, so he tasted it and he's like, I know what this is. Taste it. And we tasted it and we both said it was red currant, but like we did it backwards. Like normally people taste the food and know it in the wine. Right. We knew it from the wine. We knew what the food was. And then we did ask and we were correct. It was red currant. So that was that was the first time we've actually physically tasted one. Um, it's pretty good. Yeah, they are good. Yeah. Um, all right. So in the regions where it grows in Spain and actually in Portugal, you will taste a subtle crushed gravel or granite like minerality in the texture, which often contributes to that black peppery taste. And this is um, what I was talking about earlier. I. I couldn't find if it was a major problem or not, and that's what you're talking about. Uh, Menthea can be a trouble child in the vineyard. It is susceptible to botrytis and mildew and can lose its characteristic acidity rather quickly if not harvested promptly. Menthea's high alcohol and high acidity must be kept in check to retain the wine's balance. So there, there's quite a bit of winemaking hands involved not necessarily to hide faults or do anything like that but eyes eyes on the prize they constantly have to be checking the wine to make sure that it's going in the direction that they want it to go in oak is used sparingly as it can overwhelm the uh, delicate flavor profile and some part producers are now actually starting to experiment with carbonic maceration uh, to accentuate the variety's fruit characteristics and to reduce the tannins. So that is a process that California wineries are doing also. It, it's to kind of, you take these big wines that have high tannic structure through carbonic maceration. It allows you to get the color out, allows you to get the flavor out, but the tannin is not um, released in such high amounts. So that is what I have for general characteristics. So what do you think? Time to drink? Yes. yes. I haven't okay. had a speech of alcohol all day. Neither have I. <laughs> and I didn't drink yesterday. Slancha. Oh, I love the nose. I do too. It's a pretty nose. You can you can smell the floral and the wow. Okay, here we go. Violets, I get. Wow. Oh, definitely sour cherry. Mm. It's got a very long finish. This one's got pepper. I love it. I love the pepper. I get pepper on the, I get a little bit of pepper on the nose, but oh, I would say white pepper, pepper not blue. black. This the swine here, it explodes. Mm. Oh, this is a winner. This Holy is a cow. sour cherry, red currant. This, the the pepper, this is, mine is really good. The acidity is yes. so good. It just, it, it, takes your tongue and wants you 
to have more. It's yes. the city. Wow. Holy cow. That I is know, I'm, thinking, uh, I'm thinking this, well, I'll get into the food, but this is going to go great with, with food too. Uh, but oh, I am liking this. Oh, you know what? We didn't, Michael. So <laughs> Debbie, Debbie's yelling at the screen. We did it. Michael, hi, Michael. Um, I'm sorry. I just saw your question. Yes, my reserve is a Cabernet Franc. It is a single designated Cabernet Franc uh, vineyard. You want to know what we're drinking. So I'm drinking Godelia Menthia. Okay, so I am drinking Petiolas. Oh, what a pretty label. Right? Petiolas. Yeah. And one of the things. Um, so is yours chilled? Did you chill yours? Yeah, mine's too chilled. It's it's a. Uh, I had it in the refrigerator and I took it out. Um, I took it out about uh, like I said before. I forgot what time it was. So right. it's a it's a little um, on the chill side. So but, how does it taste chilled? Because you know Gamay, you would you serve slightly chilled. Um, the so I had it in the up? glass and kind of. Oh, you it up in my glass. Um, so my glass is fine, but the bottle is sweating all over the place because it's yes. like a hundred degrees out. Um, but yes. Um, so I forgot what I was going to say. So should I go? I'll go into the history. Yes. Of yes. And Michael, we're going to talk more about the wines themselves. Yeah. Um, after after Debbie's. Uh, history. So we'll go back to the wines in a minute. So men Mencia is a Spanish grape grown in the northwestern part of Spain, um, just outside the Galicia uh, region. Bierzo, Valdoras, and the Riviera Sacra are most known for growing the grape. It's also grown in the northern part of Portugal and goes by Jean Dado. Isn't that a cool name? <laughs> it is. It is a really cool name. Um, the spiritual home of Menthia is Bayerzo, which is situated in the far west corner of Castilla y Leon. And Bezero consists of both numerous small valleys with high altitude sites that are perfect for growing this grape. So here we have some pictures of um, some men. A lot men of foliage. Yeah, it was once um, thought to be a clone of Cabernet Franc. See, that's why we like it so much. I know, I know. I know. Um, like near and dear. Then the University um, of Madrid did some DNA profiling, and it's not related to Cab Franc at all. But it's identical to Portugal's uh, Jean Daudo. So here I have the Cap Franc grape and the, the Menthea grape. And you can see a little bit of the similarities. Yeah, I just, I can't get over how much foliage there is. That's like. Oh, yeah. Well, you know what? Maybe they don't do leaf pulling or something. I mean, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Um, that's a lot of energy into leaves. Yeah. But maybe they need it for other reasons. Maybe. So Mencia was overcropped with high yields, and the wine was thin. And it was, was not a wine that people really sought after. It was kind of, um, in this particular region, kind of like just, I want to say left. Nobody really was focusing on the grape. And then Alvaro Pal Palacios who comes from a wine growing family in the Rioja Baja region. He got into obviously wine. Um, he studied in Bordeaux and he moved to Prat where he created uh, wines from old vineyards of Grenachia and Carina. So this and whose wine am I drinking? Are you drinking his wine? I am drinking his wine. Oh, that's way cool. <laughs> that is way cool. So in 1998, he went to Bayerzo with his nephew, Ricardo Perez, and he opened up 
um, the winery, but he started making wines from the Menthia grape and he sought out old neglected wine, uh, vines to do this um, on the hillsides of Bierzo. And they also re they bought land, they replanted with Mencia and they provided, they realized that the grape was really capable of producing a good, elegant wine and a wine that also aged. Before that, the wines, they were just, I, I would say just thin everyday wines that you don't put much thought into. Um, Menthia has to be watched because it is very susceptible to botrytis and mildew. And because of the weather, as you said, um, it'll lose its acidity if it's harvested too late with alcohol levels rising to undesirable levels. So not only, you know, a lot of times, you know, grapes will be left on the vine to, you know, have the sugars rise here it's really essential that they pick it at the right time. And at the right time, not just for the mildew, the botrytis, but it's it's everything. It's, it's you know, I would say it, it's very um, sensitive. It has, you have to do it at the right time. So that's pretty much what I have. Um, there really yeah, wasn't, yeah. I, I tried to research and there's not much known on it. They, they still don't know the DNA on it. Right. Um, I found this to be a very difficult grape to do research on. Um, you know, every website I went to, everything I read was exactly the same thing, just sometimes not even in different words, exactly the same thing. Right. There was, you know, there wasn't really any true history. There wasn't any, you know, right. It was very for difficult. The who saved it because they yeah. were, uh, you know, it was just all gone to weeds, pretty much. Right. Right. And so saved it. I guess they're going. You know, I guess we have a long way to go in finding out more about this grape and the history of it. Um, but there's really not a lot of information on this at all. This is a darn good wine. <laughs> it really is. It really is. And I'm trying to think back to our pat, you know, our previous. Um, wine for Bet Streets, and you know, this is the first one that I'm like gangbuster over in a in a while. You know, yeah. There's, there's others that I've liked. Um, this you know. is very similar, though. See, the, the things characteristics that I like about a Cap Franc is I love the pepper. Right. I love that burst of pepper and the burst of spice in a wine, and this is giving it to me. My bottle yeah. is. I kind of get, I kind of get the gamay. I didn't want that drop to fall. I had, did you notice that? I kind of yeah, wasted. I saw that. that. Um, I, I kind of get the concept of a gamay, but not a pinot. It's it's bigger than a pinot. Mm -hmm. You know, bigger than a gamay too. It's bigger than a gamay also, but the the aromas are more yeah. gamay like to me. Um. But I, I'm digging it big time. Oh, I've got some uh, little vanilla in there. Yeah, I'm. I, you know, it, it really does remind me of a Cap Franc. It does. It's not it as weight-wise. It's a little bit lighter than a Cap Franc. It has more. Not, I think it has more acidity. It has more acidity, like more towards the Gamay. Yeah. 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 Um. I, I I really like it. Um, so this is a good time to talk about our sponsor. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay. So our sponsor is Wink Wines, and um, basically Wink Wines is a, a wine club that you can join for free. And what you do is you take a little profile quiz. The first time you go to their website, you take a little profile quiz. And by answering these simple questions, they give you a palette profile, and then they start to recommend wines for you. And every month, you get four bottles shipped to you. You can add to that if you would like, but as long as you take four bottles, the shipping is included. Okay, And you can either pick the wines that they recommend to you every month, or you can say, no, I want to do this instead. Add to it, take away, do whatever you want to do. If you don't want wines that month, you can skip a month at no penalty. So it's a really variable type of wine. 
And if you go to our link, which is trywink.com forward slash winefabet, so T R Y W I N C dot com forward slash winefabet, you're going to get $22 off of your first box. And that pretty much gives you four wines delivered to your door for like under $30. So it's awesome. You can cancel at any time and uh, you can skip if you want. You can add, you can do whatever. They have everything. I've gotten ciders from there. Um, really? And yeah, I've gotten ciders. And uh, next month's episode is going to be a wine that I got from wink.com. Uh, they're always changing, and it's a whole bunch of different wineries from all our winemakers from all over the world. So there's California, there's Spain, there's Portugal, there's there's loads of wines constantly changing. So just check it out if you're interested in getting a good deal. You know, 22 bucks off of your first box. If you don't like your first box, that's four wines for under 30 bucks. Cancel at no penalty. So, but Can't go wrong. yeah. So this is my wine. And that came from me. This is Petiolas. And this I got, from, it is a 2015. And one of the interesting things that I did read and that I did notice on this is that Menthea is hardly ever, ever, ever on the label. Does your label say Menthea? It does. It does. On it the does front? Right to the back? Right underneath oh. the name. Oh, okay. So, apparently, so the other one I saw, the one I have in my wine cellar says it too, and the one that the guy gave me at the restaurant says it. Oh, but so, I will say that this is a lot better than the one the gentleman left at the restaurant. restaurant. So <laughs> typically it actually doesn't say it on it according to the statistics. It's more important about the region. So on the back it says, um, you know, this is from, um, well, it's in Spanish. I mean, um, it is from Petiolos 2015 and Bolsado por Descendentes de J. Palacios. So from the descendants of Palacios. Um, and this it is, is from Bierzo. Bierzo. Yep, this is also from Bierzo. Um, so I honestly, you pretty much said my wine because uh, that was the same information I had about <laughs> the wine. Uh, this actually got a 92 with both James Suckling and Robert Parker. Wow. And at $18, I'm going back and buying more because it was pretty stellar. Um, but it is from the famed winemaker Alvaro Palacios. It's, according to them, this rich velvet textured red is actually made from 60 to 100 year old Menthea vines. And they are grown in the deep, in um, steep slopes of Bierzo. Uh, and I was next. I was going to talk about where he came from, but you went over that. He, right? He's from Rio. <laughs> Sorry, um, still your thunder. But uh, he worked for Chateau Petrus in Bordeaux. Well, okay, not too shabby of a place to to work. Um, upon returning to Spain, he ventured northeast to Bierzo. And he kind of found his love with Menthea and with the region, wanting to make wine from the region. Um, he's traveled his native Spain. He's uh, He actually was first a barrel salesman. So he used to sell French barrels to the winemakers. And during his journey, he would always like, here's my barrel. How about you give me some wine? <laughs> so he was constantly trying. He was constantly like tasting wines from different regions that he was selling the wines to or the wine barrels to. In 1990, he ultimately found um, Peruar, uh, which is where he would achieve worldwide fame with La Merta and Finca Dofe. I am not familiar with them, but apparently that's worldwide fame. Um, but he also did love Bierzo. And what else did you not say? Um, so it had the ingredients that Alvaro wanted. The region had the ingredients that Alvaro wanted, distinctive terroirs and ancient vineyards. And it had the Menthea grape. And so this was what he wanted to do. He wanted to be the spokesperson for Menthea. So he is like me he with Ken Pronk. What? He saved, he saved yeah. the 
Yes, he is the Correct. reason why it's there. Um, so that beginning in 2001, his estate began to make individual vineyard bottlings. The winery itself is dedicated to his father. Um, he works with his son, Ricardo, and um, that's pretty much the wine, minus what you already said, because he's so famous. <laughs> so mine is from Godelia. Okay. And in, in 2009, uh, Vicente um, decided to produce wine with the Menthea grape or open also a winery because he he makes wine from other grapes as well and um this particular wine what i'm drinking actually is it's much older it is a 2012 oh wow so shows how how it ages i would i would love for us to be in the same room since yours is a younger wine Good taste, yeah. Taste the difference because I think mine is a little bit darker than yours. I don't know. Mine's pretty dark. It might just be yeah. lighting. Maybe it's a, it might be the lighting. So, um, this particular um, Dementia comes from fifty to ninety year old vines. All picking is done by hand, loaded into small plastic crates, and then chilled twenty four to forty eight hours. Um, at 23 degrees in reef containers, and this causes them to split and begin maceration on the skins. It's then cold soaked um, and entirely destemmed. Fermentation starts slowly as the musts warm up in the tank, and the temperature remains cool, 69 to 71 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, through from through the entire fermentation period. The wine uh, rests on the skins for another six days with gentle extraction. Um, with the short pump overs. And the Menthea spends 12 months in 105 and 132 gallon oak casks. And these oak casks, 90% are French, 10 are American, and one third of them are new oak. Oh. Um, so I actually have, um, I actually have another video, let's try, um, okay. that I found of this uh, girl on a trek through Spain and she went to the winery and it really shows the history because there's like five people that are mainly involved in the winery. And um, if we can't get it to go, then I have something written up. But I kind of thought we'll see if it goes. Play video. I've just arrived in Santiago after walking for almost 800 kilometers. It's been amazing. A lot has happened to me on this journey, but the best of it all are the incredible people I've met. It's funny, while I was lost, I actually found myself. And I started to feel this way when I arrived to El Bierzo. Hello. Hello. Can I have a local wine, please? All right. Thanks. I don't know if that was a sign, but I needed to know where the wine came from. They told me it was made in Godelia, a winery halfway through the Camino de Santiago. Here I am, Godelia, the place where this delicious wine is made, and it is just harvest time. Hello, anybody there? Si, dame un segundo, por favor. She is Maria Jose, one of Godelia's driving forces. Maria Jose takes me to the heart of Godelia, the wine tanks room. Olga, quiero presentarte a alguien. Hola, ¿qué tal tu camino? She is Olga, the enologist of the winery. Here they produce Godelia Selection, Godelia Red, Pilgrim, Viernes, and even a sweet wine, Levamos. Olga tells me her job is fascinating, and I want to find the essence of this wine and its main ingredient, the grape. Hot. When Olga sees that the grape is ready, given its degree in ripening, 
the madness starts. Godelia's team picks by hand 35 hectares of vineyards. The team works hard all day long and I want to be part of it. And here is Godello, the native variety of grape that makes such unique wines. Godelia works with Mencia and Godello, which are grape varieties only found in Albierzo and part of Galicia. Mencia is a refined grape introduced here by the Romans. It is scented with red berries and provides the wine with a particular acidity. And Godello, so trendy these days, is fresh and straw colored with loads of mineral notes, very novel, with character. The soil here is very unique, made of slate, clay or boulders, depending on the area. Hello. Hola, ¿cómo es con nosotros? It's like Big Brother in the country. You spend so many hours together and you better have a good temper to deal with it. The day is over, but work continues at the winery. After we collect the grape, it arrives at the winery and then goes to the sorting table. Godelia's team separates the bunches from the leaves to select the best grapes. Then they are put into the wine tanks. After fermentation, they rack the white wines and run off the red wines. They press the grape skins and rack them off for the malolactic fermentation. This fermentation is needed to polish the red wines and make them easy to drink. And here works Sarah. Sarah deals with the commercial side in Godelia. She impregnates herself with every detail of each vintage in order to advise the consumer. Days went by and I couldn't get the team's excitement out of my mind. The climb to Osebrea is hard, just like the harvest. I imagine Godelia's team is now doing the pressing. The pressing consists of extracting the juice from the grape at the right time. The cycle for red wine is 75 minutes and for the drain they extract the first 10 minutes. Then they let the wine settle in the wine tanks. After a few weeks and depending on its quality, the wine will be bottled as young wine or left in the barrel. While I continue my journey, the vines continue theirs. At Godelia, they will be doing the green pruning in the next months to define the wines we'll drink next year. During Camino, I can say I have mature too. And when I think of the Camino, I'll remember Godelia. This experience has been unforgettable. A good Camino must be accompanied by great wines. Very That's pretty. pretty much it, yeah. I thought she explained it better than I could. <laughs> and then you get to see actually the winery and that's the staff. Yeah. There's only like five or six of them permanent, you know, that that run the winery itself. Okay. All right. So you are up again. We're going to talk about uh, food the uh, uh, food pairings. All right. Curious what you came up with because my mind is... Uh, so, well, you know what? You're always going to go with what's available in the, you know, in the region. In the region. So, Manchego cheese. <laughs> but uh, let's see here. What do I have? Pork. It goes very well with pork. Um, it cuts through the, the acidity, cuts through the fattiness of the pork. And it also, I don't know if I, I don't remember if I did a duck. I did. That's Kitchen 330 duck. <laughs> <laughs> um, duck will go very well with this because of the fruity, um, as long as it's done in a fruit-based uh, accompaniment with the duck, like a lot of duck is served with, um, you know, a blueberry compote or a cherry compote or some type of a, a fruit profile. Right. And it'll match a roasted duck. It will match with uh, the scrape. I also almost want Gus to bring me home. We, he made a duck and sweet potato croquet. Croquet. Croquet is a game. Croquettes. Um, I want to see how this pairs with with that. I bet you it'll pair really nicely because it's got some a fruity uh, compost next to it. Um, so pork. Um, it will go well with um, brisket, barbecued brisket. 
it'll go well with. Um, I can see barbecue. Yeah, barbecue brisket. And of course, all different kinds of cheeses. We have um, Mahone cheese, which is from um, Mallorca, which is off the coast of Spain, an island off the coast of Spain. Um, and it's also known for its cheese production and it's home to the most respected dairy plants of Europe, in Europe. Uh, Roquefort cheese, Roquelette, um, goat cheese, Gouda, Monterey Jack, your classic Manchego, you know, in Spain, uh, go with, uh, you know, Manchego cheese, mushroom risotto, it also goes well with. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to interrupt. Going to yes. have to interrupt. Saturday, we went to Frida's uh, in the center of Bordeaux. And um, they made me, first of all, I start off with burrata. So mm. I'm in happy land. Um, but then they made me a risotto with this tomato basil pepper sauce. <sighs> It was this so would good. go well with that. Yes, it would. Yes, it would. It would be incredible with this. Um, it would be incredible with this. But the the risotto in this restaurant was out of this world. It was so good, beyond yeah, beyond delicious. But and sorry. I'm seeing, I'm seeing. You know, this probably would do good with the barbecue rind. I'm thinking ribs as well. Oh yeah, I can see. I can see barbecue. It's actually, you know, now that it, it's it's warming up even more, um, it's kind of petite Syrah like. So I'm going to. I'm going away from the Gamay and Pinot. It is at least mine is a bigger wine. Oh, yeah. I, I get the floral. I just poured myself in a second glass, and I get yeah, I'm almost done with my second. <laughs> oh well, I just. I guess I'm playing catch up with you. Yeah, uh, so. it's it is a much bigger wine than I would say with Gamay or or. A I would I you know I don't think I would put it in with a Gamay no. or or a Pinot family. I put it more with a with the Petit Syrah, Cab Franc, like Cab Franc. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it definitely the has floral, the floral, the pepper. You know, there there's minerality in there. Um, you know, Michael was saying that the wine shop told him it was vegetal. I don't get vegetal. I'm I don't not get getting any, any either, purazine. Michael. No, I'm not getting get, any purazine. You know, I don't get any vegetal, and I'm wondering if the the person was reading how it was related because Cap Franc sometimes can have that vegetal quality. Mm -hmm. I. Or maybe the particular wine, Michael, that you purchased had had a you know a vegetal quality. I don't, I don't know. But it's not um, when you look at the grape and what it has. Pyrazine is not there. Like that's not what they're mm -hmm. saying is high up there. Yeah. So. And I'll tell you, my my wine cost nineteen dollars, and this is a darn good wine. Yeah. For nineteen dollars. Yeah, I. Like I said, mine was 18 and I will go get more. This is this at under $20. This is an everyday wine that can stand up to a not everyday to like a special occasion too. Yes. I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm I would pair it. it with a steak, but I would definitely go with like a brisket, anything smoked, even pulled pork. Um, you know, pork loin, ribs, and it's definitely hard cheese, although it's a yeah. goat cheese too, but, um, yeah, I would go more hard. Or semi, a semi soft, maybe, um, cause Gouda is kind of a semi soft Manchego. Um, but I wouldn't go with, uh, it wouldn't go well with like a Parmesan cheese or, or anything like that. Yeah. I'm trying, I'm trying to think of my, my. Yeah, my vegetarian meals, um, a bean burrito, Chipotle, maybe. Yeah, uh, I can see. Maybe not, not hot Chipotle. No, you know, I wouldn't go little, with spice. 
Yeah, no, but like spice, a nice spice in the wine. Yeah, a nice glass. bean burrito. Um, but I think it could go with lighter stuff too. Like I think it can. I think that like a, a spinach salad. Um, you know, with a with bacon bits in it. Yeah, oh. like, you know, with bacon, bacon bits. lard. Yeah, like I, I'm, I'm, yeah. I mean. Mm. We have a spinach and berry salad at the restaurant. This would taste really good with that. Is it strawberry? It depends on what seasonal berries. Oh, okay. Depends on what the berries are. Like raspberry. Oh, my God. Yeah, he puts blackberries in them. Oh, blackberry. And I think there's goat cheese, or not goat cheese, blue cheese. Oh. This would taste really good with that. I prefer the goat cheese. Not with this, but I prefer the goat cheese. I'm going to have to, I don't know if I'm going to, if this will still be around by Thursday when we open again, but I might have to bring that in for some photo ops. Mm -hmm. Oh, Tinto Toros. Well, let's here. see. Well, I pick up Tinto de Toros and a few others. They refer me to a thirteen ninety nine. Yeah. Was poor, so I decided yes, again. It was so poor. Oh, you'll like, you'll like this, Michael. You will. Yeah. I, try and find it, either one of what we have. This is, this is the one that I have, the Godelia. Right. And this is Petiolus. And, um, and yeah, and he's the one that revived the region. So definitely find one of ours. So yeah. mine was 19, yours was 18. I, I do think it's I do think it's similar to Cab Franc. Um it's it's I would I would classify it closer to Cab Franc than a Pinot and yes. a, a gamay. And weight wise, I wouldn't even put it in a Pinot or a Gamay weight wise no. classification. No. It's definitely medium bodied. Not light bodied. No, I would even go little... medium plus. I'd even go me. It, yeah, mine, medium mine, plus. Mine, yeah, it. I guess yeah, medium plus. Yeah. Um, and I will tell you, Michael. Somebody at um, a customer at the restaurant that we just opened happened to leave a bottle of Mencia for me, and I didn't particularly care for it. So that might be going to your thirteen ninety nine bottle. What made you? What made you not go for it though? What was in it that? Why did you not like it compared to what you're liking now? It was, um, there was no body to it. It lacked body. Okay. okay. It lacked, the fruit was very dull. It lacked expression of fruit. And there was no pepper. Okay. It was just, it was flat. And it was uninteresting. So I, I, it, Almost, you know, it could have come from overcropped grapes. It could, I mean, then again, also, I've seen people come into the restaurant with bottles that have been sitting in their car all day. Well, so that, I was going to say that. Like that could happen as well. So it might not have been stored properly. Right. Um, I, I, don't, I don't have the answer. I don't know that. Um, but I, I, when I did taste it, I was like, oh, I don't like this. This is just, I uh, wonder what I'm getting, you know, wonder what's going to happen tonight. Because this was about three weeks ago. Yeah. And um, I did not take a picture of the bottle because it just, you know. Yeah. Which I'm, I'm glad I did not because I'm I didn't curious. want to. I, I'm curious um, because as we stated that there is a lot of menthia out there that is just basic table wine. So I'm wondering if it was that the bottle you had was just low quality or, or not knowing what to expect in a grape variety. Could it be that it was faulted and you didn't realize it was faulted because you don't know what to That might be as well. Expect. Because this right here, this is knocking my socks off. Yeah. If yeah. I saw this on a menu at a restaurant, I would order it in a heartbeat. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I am will go buy more of this. Although this this was sent to me, I will I have to confess this was sent to me as a sample. But oh, um, you know what? Kudos. So I am totally impressed. Um, I would definitely recommend. The grape and the wine. 
Yeah, and I'm I'm very curious to now try another bottle, um, to compare it. You know, this this I love this wine. Um, so so I'd like to, I'd like to try another bottle to see if it is the grape that I like. You know, um, but we'll. I, I'm impressed. I'm impressed with this. And I, I am trying to think back to Wine for Bet Street, the previous episodes, and I'm, I'm not really remembering one that we were both like. It wowed. Yeah, wowed. And um, for $18. Um, 19 yeah. Yeah. I mean, under 20 bucks is is pretty spot on, you know. Yeah. It's great, uh -huh. and it's great value. It's a great wine. I mean, yeah. I'm speaking for my wine. You could speak for your wine. Yours is, you know, but, and it would be, you know what? It would be a good summer red to take to a barbecue. Yeah, yeah. I'm still, I'm, I'm still trying to wrap on, you know, vegetarian meals that it would go with. Um, but, like, I, I'm thinking, it would go with like an um, not spicy. I don't. I'm not going spicy, but like an Asian, um, like kung pao, not kung pao chicken. Um, General Tao's chicken, but General Tao's tofu. Um, yeah, I do General Tao's tofu too. Like that. I don't know if it would go with that. No, too sweet. I think it's too sweet. Too sweet. Too sweet. Um. I mean, honestly, the thing that's coming to my brain over and over again is cheese. Yes. Like, this is this is a wine that Mike and I are going to sit outside with, glass in hand, cheese platter in front of me, and yes, I'm just going, going to town with cheese. Yes. Um, you know, but I, the risotto that I had in Bordeaux is. I'm going there with that. Yeah, also. yeah, that will taste good. And, and mushrooms, it goes, you know, mushroom risotto and yeah. it would probably taste um, well with like a chicken and a mushroom sauce. Yeah. yeah. Well, not, not for me, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, you know, again, that mushroom thing is a Cab Franc thing. Mushrooms go very well with, with a Cab Franc. Yeah. Um, and I, it's funny because they talked about how they thought it was Cab Franc, but I don't know if they thought it was Cab Franc from the leaf structure and the, you know, the cluster structure. Like, um, was it elongated? The the picture was, you know, it was tough because you had a picture in bin and you had a picture on a vine. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the you, you can identify grapes. That was part of UC Davis, which drove me crazy. But, like, they show you a picture of a grape cluster, and we were supposed to identify it by the grape cluster. Um, you know, some are elongated, some are fatter. Um, the berries are bigger or the berries are smaller. Um, you know, all of that stuff. So I'm wondering if it looks like Cab Franc or um, if it tastes like it. And there is a lot of similarity in the taste to me, but there's also, uh, if if I tasted this blind, I would not say it was Cap Franc. Like, I, you know, if I was blind, I wouldn't say it was Cap Franc. Um, but, I ha you know, my palate is very specified to Cap Franc. There's um, not enough cherry flavor in it for me to say it's Cap Franc. There's, you know, it's, it's got a different acidity level. It's yes. got a different mouthfeel um, to it. It's beautiful, but it's, it, to me, it's not, it's not Cap Franc. So if I was tasting it, I wouldn't say it was. So I'm, tr I'm curious as to what made them think it was Cap Franc. But then again, they thought Carmenere was Merlot forever. Right. And, I don't I get think that. Your research has to be done on this particular grape, right? Um, so maybe you know it will be done. Maybe it's just not right. high on their priority, right? And you know what? If if wine like this is being imported, it will get on people's radar. Yes, 
Um, so my guess is that we're getting this for a great price because it's not on too many people's radar. Yep, and, and I, I will say mine is, what did I say mine was a 2012, yours is a 2015. The only difference is a dollar price. Right. So where my wine is aging really well, and actually it's probably, I would say um, at its peak right now, I don't know if I would sell or something like this. See, now that's interesting because yours is a 2012 and you're saying that I, I would, I would not recommend this past next year, which I guess so, is. So, you yeah. know how on my video they said that some of them are bottled and then some of them are aged? Yeah. I definitely got the one that is aged and you got one that is bottled and, and put well, out. Well, no, because it's a 2015. So, oh, yours is a 15 age. Yeah. Oh, I thought, okay, so yours is 15 and mine's 12. Okay. Yeah, yeah, mine's mine's 15. Um, so it's it's being aged. Okay. Um, and it, I think that it can stand a few more years. You know, I think you it's drinkable next so year. Put it on, in line with my wine. Right. So I, I'm going to say, I'm going to say drink, I'm going to say drink by 2020 is what mm -hmm. I would say for this. And I would say mine is probably, I would get it now. I, I wouldn't go past a, a, another year. Right. I would, I right. would definitely pick it now. It would, would make a great holiday. Not, not that you know. Here we are in June, thinking of the holidays. But this would make a good uh, wine around the holidays. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's it's beautiful. It's beautiful. All right, I'm going to go into our fast facts. Where are my fast facts? Could be in there. Nope. I can't get in. So stop slide. That's what it was. That that's what you had in the folder. Yeah, there's just no there's nothing there. Um okay. upload. Mencia, Mencia facts. Hold on. It was only one slide. It was weird. Really? Uh, all right, whatever. I'll just. Right, it's in there now. It's a Mencia, Mencia Facts Take Two. See if that works. I'm not even seeing that. Here. Yeah, I'm not seeing that. It's all right. There it is. Preview. Start. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So, Ms. Fermentia, fast facts. Okay. We got fact number one. Mencia only grows in Spain and Portugal and the Iberian Peninsula, except now it grows in part of Australia. So, Australia has decided that it is a good wine. Re it is a good wine grape for Menthia, or great wine region for Menthia, and there is a very small production. So, if you take all of the production of Menthia, it is like ninety-five percent Spain, like four percent Portugal, and one percent now Australia, or less than one percent in Australia. Fact number two. Mencia is labeled as Jain in Portugal. It is grown specifically in the northern half of the country. Fact number three. Although Mencia has no relation to Cabernet Franc, a relation was long suspected due to the similarities of aromas. And I will go back to, I agree with the aromas, 
but the flavor profile is different. I um, agree with you. Basically, and, because and, and, and even the aromas are are different. I think there's more similarity. There similarity. Like I can see, right. I can see somebody saying there's similarities in the aromas, but the the palette just is is a different palette. But I I can get it. I can get it. But again, I want to go back and I want to look up. I want to compare the grape cluster to grape cluster and the grape leaf to the grape leaf um, because those are identifying factors in terms of visual on the vine. So I would like to go back and look at those and compare those for my own science geekiness, nerdiness of myself. Uh, fact number four, although Mencia, oh, I forgot the end, is relatively easy to find in the United States, you need to be aware that with many Mencias, you will still only see the appellation name, such as Bierzo, on the front label, not the grape name, as mine does not have the grape name anywhere on the label. Mine does. Right. And last, according to the latest figures, there are about 25,000 acres of Mencia in Spain, as well as about 7,000 acres in Portugal. And I think there's less than a thousand acres um, in Australia. So that. Do you know where in Australia? What? Do you know where in Australia? No, I didn't do. I didn't go that no, far. I'm just sorry. Put you on the spot. That's all right. Nope. I'm just noticing my teeth are really purple. I know. I got this one tooth that really picks up the. Uh, <laughs> and it, it's. I need wine wipes. <laughs> yeah. uh, but so that that is Menthia. Um, I'm a I'm a lover. I am too. I got two thumbs up for Menthia. So next month. Yes. We're running out. It's, it's already nine o'clock. We are going to talk about the letter N. Yes. And it's Negrama. I can't pronounce. I'm terrible Negrama. at Negrama. I'm terrible at pronunciations and I, I apologize I take after my father he always messed up the English language um, and if you would like to sign up there is the link so um, and what day is it it is going to be on Monday July 16th so will you, are you gonna be able to make it Eee, that's going to be a tie. I, um, I think I might be bottling. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm bottling on the 17th. Never mind. Bottling on the okay. 17th and 18th. Bottling 17th and 18th. So okay, good. so you're able to make it on the 16th? Yeah, yeah. We're bottling on the 17th and the 18th. Okay. So, oh, it's our, it's our first year bottling on two days. Nice. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. Yes. yes, we are growing. We are growing. So, uh, that's one. I, mean, I guess days. technically we bottled. So technically we bottled two days because we bottled the Cab Franc and then we bottled the rosé at a whole different time. That rosé is. If you got, if any of you out there listening, if you can get a hold of Lori's rosé of Syrah, it is absolutely awesome. I haven't even written about it. I think I did post a picture. I don't even know if I did, but we had it one night and it was. Oh, it was, thank you. It was just so good. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it, yes. you know, I say it all the time. It's like when it's, I mean, we don't have children, so, you know, we have our wine. <laughs> but when people say they like our wine and they make comments like that, it's, it, it's heartwarming. And I, words can't explain how appreciative I am and how, um, honestly, I can't explain what it makes me feel like when people's, post that they love our wine or do you know say it so thank you oh you're welcome so, so anyway. that is Venthia. yes and we hope we uh opened up everybody's minds and palates to a new grape um it's something that you wouldn't normally go into a liquor store and seek out but i would definitely recommend um both of our brands that we were drinking tonight because we were both very, very happy with them and they're great value. They're both under $20 and 
I'm telling you, I'm, I don't know if there's going to be much left in my bottle after because I'm really enjoying this. I'm, I'm on glass three. Um, and I'm going to say there's probably another glass before I, I, I hit the sack tonight. Yeah. So it, um, it's good. Yeah, it is good. So definitely, you know, if, if this is the type of wine that you like, definitely go seek out. Give it a try. Yeah. Give it a try. Yeah. And thank you, Karen and Michael, for joining us. We appreciate you being here. And we hope we uh, taught you some stuff about Menstia. And I will get back to you, too, on uh, where to find the wine. If you if you know um, where oh, they can get the wine on wink.com. No, 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 that's next month. Oh, that's next month. Okay. Um, because they were looking to find to purchase it. Yeah. Um, I got it. I got it at a local shop. Um, but Michael, Michael's in California. Uh, and they Karen's in San Francisco. Yeah, yeah. So I think, I think Michael's south. Um, but yeah. Okay. So um, I, I'm going to find we'll out where they can purchase, purchase my, my wine. So, um, anyway. Thank you guys for joining us, and we'll catch you next month. Yes. Slancha. Cheers. <laughs>